Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my very first Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl Wi-Fi battle. Before we jump right into it, if you guys could leave a like on the video, it would help out the channel a lot, as well as leave a comment letting me know what type of Pokemon you guys would like to see me get to do work in some Wi-Fi battles. Anyway, so this is, yeah, like I said, my very first battle. This has been, it's been an extremely long time since I have done anything, any videos like this. I figured it's only right to do some post-commentary action. So, you can see the team that I'm working with here. Uh, I got some some competitive Pokemon built. Shout out to Echo Bows from uh, my Twitch and Discord server. You are amazing for supplying me with these mons. But looking at the opponent's team, he's got some scary stuff. You know, I'm kind of, I'm kind of afraid. I'm seeing a Togekiss, a Garchomp. Uh, there's a Rotom Wash down there, so it's going to definitely be an interesting fight. As you'll notice, I have a Carnivine on this team, which is, you know, pretty uh, interesting. I, I wanted to see if I could get this thing to work, so let's keep in mind that I'm quite rusty when it comes to Wi-Fi battling. I haven't done I haven't done any battles, especially on console, in a super long time, but I'm actually really excited to get back into it. Of course, the original Diamond and Pearl was when I first started Wi-Fi battling. It was when Wi-Fi was introduced, and it's kind of like we've, we've come full circle playing in the, the, the remade versions. Anyway, he's going to lead off with the bell. I decided to go for Ambipom. Um, I figured he was likely going to just go ahead and lead with, lead with that Bronzong. I almost threw out Infernape uh, to start things off, just expecting that. But I go for a handy job, and I'm just going to go ahead and uh, you know give this guy a little slap a rooney get him with the fake out this ambipom is actually extremely useful i really like ambipom as a pokemon uh, i thought it would be kind of helpful considering there's no there, there's no unlimited timer you actually are restricted to 20 minutes in these games so i decided to try to build a team that's a little more offensive oriented uh, but i get the fake out and then i get a u-turn i get a nice little bit of chunk uh, off on that bronzong there which is nice now i'm thinking should i try to go into pd and get a sleep powder yeah probably not so <laughs> i'm gonna instead uh just take this momentum and i'd opt to go for uh the infernape here as he goes for the reflect which is nice now infernape is a super fun pokemon that i was actually really excited to use uh because it excels really well in both physical and special attacks so since he set up the reflect that's perfect for me i can just go right for the flamethrower um, I also have, obviously, physical attack, so mixtape, he, he's, he's a mixed ape, and he's a mixtape because he's fire, amazing nickname, and that takes care of the Bronzong, so I've already got one down, he did get rid, uh, he did get that reflect up, unfortunately he wasn't able to get up stealth rock, uh, which is great for me, so now he goes into Washington, and that gives me memories, I totally forgot that I used to name my Rotom Washes Washington, so shout out to my dude for, <laughs> for uh, his Washington here, now I'm gonna go right into PD, hoping that he doesn't uh, expect that and just go right for a Volt Switch. I figure it's probably a, a likely play that he goes for the Volt Switch, but if there's any time that I'm going to get PD in, it was against this thing. Uh, unfortunately, he does go ahead and uh, get the pivot there, and now PD is kind of a sitting duck waiting to get absolutely destroyed by whatever wants to come in. So. The idea behind this Carnivine is to potentially put something to sleep, maybe get some sword dances up and see if this thing can, can make anything happen. I mean, nobody uses Carnivine, and that's kind of was my thought there. So he, he's able to pivot into his own Infernape here. Uh, PD basically is like, I'm in danger and not having too great of a time. I'm, I'm trying to figure out a switch here. Uh, my best option is going to be the Dragonite here. I'm a pretty bulky lad, I've got Marvel scale, and I am definitely not afraid of no monkeys, so Dragonite's gonna come in here. Now, the main issue with my Dragonite in this matchup is that its moveset is not helpful against Togekiss. I literally cannot touch Togekiss. My two attacking moves being Earthquake and Dragon Claw is definitely an issue, and boy, do I hate me some Togekiss. I, for some reason, Togekiss... I really despise that thing because of Wi-Fi battles. Um, it's just too damn good. So what I'm figuring here is he's probably going to switch directly into that Togekiss. Now, if I can catch him sleeping, I can switch directly into my Rampardos at the same time and then get myself a nice little matchup, which I do. Uh, he does end up switching into the Togekiss, so Big White Cloud Burb is about to get bopped by some some big, some big head, some good head. <laughs> right, Rampardos do be given that good head. So I've got the matchup that I like here, and I'm thinking I don't really have... You know, any reason not to just go for the Rock Slide here. I actually definitely need to switch that out for Head Smash. Um, but he does end up switching out. He's going to bring back in the Infernape. Infernape says, what the hell's going on here? And imagine just switching right into a nice Rock Slide from Rampardos. That's that's not going to be too fun. Uh, so I get a great chunk of damage on that thing. I'm just going to stay in here, go right for another one. I am Choice Scarf Rampardos, uh, so I'm pretty fast. And I ain't afraid of nothing, as he... Figures that the safest option actually is for him in to go into the uh, the guard chomp here. So Jack Ripper, I'm getting 
I'm getting Cynthia vibes. I'm getting flashbacks. This is not a good time for me. I'm um, obviously being locked into the rock slide here. I need to switch. And what wants to switch into a Garchomp? Not going to be anybody. So I decide that PD is probably the least valuable member of the team at this point in time. It, it's kind of unfortunate. I want to get this guy to do something, but it's going to be... Is gonna be rough. So Petey comes in as the Garchomp decides to dance with the swords, and that is a very scary Garchomp at this point. Anytime you see, you know, that thing with it with the swords dance, you're gonna you're gonna probably get bopped. So I decide to go for the sleep pattern on the off chance of like a miss or something, uh, but he's just gonna go right for the safe play and Dragon Claws Petey, and down goes my boy. But I can at least say he was he was he was out there. He he gave it his best. Um, so I do actually have an answer for the Garchomp. And I was kind of keeping this thing in the back pocket to ensure that Alakazam uh, does work out for this matchup. So I have Dazzling Gleam. Now, Serial Killer is one of the best revenge switchers, in the, you know, revenge killers in the game, just because of the fact that he does have um, Magic Guard ability. He does not get affected by Stealth Rock. He can come in, he, his, his Focus Ash stays intact and hits extremely hard as great coverage. So. He's gonna end up switching into the Drapion here. It takes a huge chunk from that Dazzling Gleam, but I'm thinking I really need to conserve this Alakazam. If I don't have Zam, I really don't have an answer for that Garchomp, and it's just way too useful. So I decided to switch this thing out just to make sure that his Focus Sash stays intact here. I don't know what kind of Drapion this is gonna be. Uh, I decide to switch into Rampardos here. He goes for the knockoff. I was really hoping that that wasn't gonna be knockoff. Um, but of course, you know, he's gonna be, uh, 10 out of 10 times, they're pretty much gonna be running knockoff. Gets rid of my choice scarf, so I'm no longer faster, and unfortunately, one more actually takes care of me. So it's interesting to see that he opted to go for uh, the knockoff once again. Potentially, he could be scarfed himself. Uh, he's definitely gotta be choiced in, in, in some manner there. So that takes care of Rampardos, which is a huge bummer. Uh, I hate to see my guy go, but the good news about that is that allows me to uh, get a free switch into Ambipom here. This team excels really well uh, in revenge switch-ins, just because Hand D can, can hit really hard with fake outs and and uh, can kind of disrupt some teams. So I go for the fake out there, unfortunately doesn't quite take it out, as I go for the U-turn here, potentially expecting maybe him to switch out, um, and if he doesn't, he's just going to let that thing go down, and then I'm allowed to kind of put Ambipom right back in the pocket and save that thing for later. Now, the, the bad news about killing something with a pivot move like U-turn is that now he's able to see what I switch into. I have to switch into it first, and then he can kind of uh, determine a matchup seeing what I go into. So I probably, in hindsight, should not have gone for the U-turn kill there. Um, but now I'm just going to bring in Tiny Wings. So Tiny Wings comes in, he's flapping, he's trying his hardest. How the hell does this, this man's wings keep him up? Flapping at that kind of speed with your fat ass. But, <laughs> so... Uh, I bring in the Dragonite now, the Leftovers brings me back, I believe, uh, to full, which is nice, and he is able to get a free switch right into the Togekiss, which is unfortunate, because now I basically have to hard switch into something. And uh, looking at my team, I'm trying to decipher who is the most useful at this point. Um, I decide Ambipom isn't super great for me at this point, but also I can switch into a Togekiss hit. Uh, Ambipom doesn't, you know, isn't, isn't the bulkiest lad, but he can definitely come into a Dazzling Gleam. It actually does less than half, which is amazing. And now I'm thinking if I can get some chip damage off on this little Togekiss, I can have a, an easier time taking that thing out later. Because uh, I am definitely afraid of that motherfucking turkey. But uh, he ends up saving that Togekiss. He knows it's extremely valuable for this game. He decides to go into the uh, Infernape and fake out, bops him, gives him the old hand deed job, and he dead as hell. So Ambipom out here. Making a name for himself, honestly, I love this thing. So now he goes into the Garchomp. Um, when you're not in on Ambipom turn one and you don't have the, the fake out, you're, you're kind of uh, not looking great here. So I'm thinking, should I, do I switch this thing out? Should I just go for a double hit, get some damage? Or should I go for a U-turn and get some chip? I decide to go for the U-turn. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking I definitely need some damage on this Garchomp to be able to put it in range for uh, Alakazam to knock it out. I luckily get a critical hit there on that U-turn, which is great. Actually hasn't been any hacks in this game except for that. Um, and now I decide to go into Infernape. So Infernape comes in essentially just to die so that I can get a free switch into Alakazam. He goes for the Dragon Claw without any boost. Mixtape, Mixtape actually takes that, which is amazing because now this allows me to, to go for a nice hit here. Um, I'm just going to go for the safe close combat. If he stays in, likely going to uh, knock out the Chomp. If he switches, that is fine. It'll get some chip damage off on something. And if he goes into Togekiss, I also still have the Thunder Punch. So... He does decide to bring in the Togekiss. This thing is just absolutely taunting me, but the good news is any damage off on this thing is gonna set me up for the late game to be able to uh, to pick this thing off. So 
I get the close combat off on that thing. Obviously, it does negative damage, and I'd be hurting myself with my with my life orb here. So I really don't know kind of what type of Togekiss the thing is even gonna be. Um, they can be they can be set up. They can just be full support. Um, it's really kind of up in the air, but I go for the Thunder Punch here with that Iron Fist. I'm able to get a big chunk of damage, unfortunately not quite able to take it out. Uh, and then he goes for a Roost, which is quite unfortunate because uh, he's going to heal off all of that damage. Uh, plus get some leftovers, it's going to put him, uh, it's going to definitely be unfortunate here because I died to my next uh, Life Orb recoil. But, kind of analyzing the situation here, if, even if I go down to my Life Orb here, it'll allow me a free switch. Uh, which is fine. So he actually ends up switching out the Togekiss, goes into Wishy Washington, which is actually not a Wishy Washy, but you know what I mean. That actually, that nickname works, works for both Pokemon. But the Thunder Punch on that thing's actually fine, because uh, I'm able to kind of chip that thing away as well, which I don't have my freaking Carnivine anymore, who was supposed to take care of that thing, but now he's, you know, he's not available. But uh, Infernape does knock himself out to the Life Orb recoil, which does suck, but the good news about that is. Now we get a free matchup against this thing, and Ambipom excels at coming in, fake outing things, and then slapping you with a, uh, a coverage hit to knock you out. So the fake out does a, a good chunk of damage. Now I'm thinking, easy, just gotta double hit you, and you're dead. And I missed. So <laughs> double hit Ambipom is probably not the play, because that should, anytime you don't have a 100 accurate move, you're gonna miss and have a bad time. So uh, I do miss the double hit there, which sucks, because Ambipom has been putting in so much work, and he deserved to get that kill. But it's not at least it's not the end of the world. Um, I was able to do uh, enough damage to this thing to the point where Alakazam can come in easily outspeed and then easily kill with a with a nice little psychic. So that is what happens. Washington is going to go down, and that is a scary mon. I'm glad to get rid of that thing. And luckily, the biggest thing of importance is that Alakazam has his, he, he's still wearing his focus sash, looking looking dapper. Um, and so now he's just gonna go right into Togekiss. Now I'm looking at this. I'm looking at this health, and I'm like, okay, as long as I can kill this thing with two psychics, which I should be able to do, I can take a Dazzling Gleam. Even if it crits me, I have Focus Sash. I will be able to outspeed the Garchomp in the back and then hit it with a Dazzling Gleam. So it all kind of comes down to whether or not Alakazam can bring it home for us, boys. He's got his spoons ready, ready to, ready to, to munch some of that cereal. Um, so he goes for the Roost there, which actually kind of sucks, but he realizes. He's got to get some damage off on Zam if he wants to have a fighting chance. So he's sitting out actually a pretty pretty decent amount of health here, but Alakazam is just too he too smart. Them psychics just do too much damage, and uh, that's not fun for that thing. So he goes for the Dazzling Gleam here. It actually doesn't do quite half, which is amazing. With my win condition being Alakazam at this point, I'm looking pretty nice, easily able to take care of this thing with another psychic, and then all that he's got left in the back is going to be that Garchomp. Uh, my team isn't specifically catered to taking care of Togekiss, um, and so I'm, I'm, I'm glad to be able to take care of that thing without it, you know, rip it too big of a hole in the squad, so now he goes into his last mon, it's gonna be that Garchomp, this thing has taken quite a bit of chip damage in the past, and it's sitting at just above half health, I just go right for the nice little Dazzling Gleam, hit him with the Razzle Dazzle, and down goes the Garchomp, that is going to conclude the game, and the new squad has copped their first win. That was actually a really fun game for my first Wi-Fi battle back. Uh, I appreciate you guys very much for watching. Thank you so much. If you leave a comment, let me know what kind of Pokemon you'd like to see me add to the team and get some, to do some work. I have a really fun time trying to bring at least one kind of wild card weird Pokemon. So maybe that's kind of what I'll, what I'll work on if you guys would be interested in that sort of thing. Uh, anyways, yeah, if you guys enjoyed, make sure you hit that like button on the video and I will see you guys next time with hopefully some more Wi-Fi battles because I'm actually having a good time. Peace out.